Well, hello and welcome back to my channel on YouTube. Um, uh, thanks a lot for all the comments I've received lately uh, from the various uh, videos I've been posting. Uh, some of the questions uh, lately have been relating to how to get data in to MVS from uh, from the outside world, from my from my uh, laptop or computer, from Windows or Linux, and also. Uh, how to get data out of MVS. So today we're going to look a little bit at that and see how to accomplish that. One of the main things to understand uh, when we think about data on the mainframe is that uh, the mainframe treats files a little differently. First of all, they're not called files in the MVS world, they're called data sets. Number two, uh, in the Windows and Linux world, every file is just a stream of bytes. And in Windows world, there is a, a carriage return and the and uh, and the new line attached at every end of the line so that when you read text you know when a line has finished in the linux world there is no um there's no carriage return there's only the new line uh, but other than that every file whether binary or text or anything it's just a stream of bytes now in the mainframe world uh, this is quite different uh, we remember when if we want to create a data set so we can write into it in the in the mbs world we'll go to you know, on, on, tier, on three, MBS 3.8, we'll go in utilities, um, in this area, and then select data set, create, delete, rename, catalog, or non catalog. So uh, let's go and create a new data set, and we call it YouTube uh, Exercise um, Source. Okay, and then we go up here and we say A for allocate. And now it, what it's asking me, what is the record format? And so every data set in MBS is just really a collection of record. And you need to specify at creation time what the record, uh, how those records look like. So in this case, you can have two kinds of records. We can have variable records, uh, which, which are just records uh, of variable length. And you need to have your software um, being able to read when when a when a record has finished, it could be a special character or something, or you could do fixed block, which means they're all the same length. And then it wants to know what is the lo what's the logical record length. Text and source code is usually 80. Physical block size. You want, this is something that's very important. Every disk has its own geometry. There's MBS uh, supports in this case with TK4 33. 50s, 3375 disk, 3380s, and even 3390s. And so every disk has its own uh, optimum uh, block size when you wanna when you wanna cr create a data set because if you're not careful with the block size, you may be wasting a lot of space. Uh, but I'm not gonna go into that too much today. Uh, let's do it like this. And then you wanna specify tracks or cylinders. I'm going to make it a five, well, a one cylinder with a secondary extension and directory blocks. Directory blocks are what it says, which is if you want to have a partition data set, you will put in here a non zero number. So in this case, I, I allow up to 40 directory entries. Um, and that's it, the data set is organized. So if you remember, and then if you want to go look at it, 3.4 data set list. And if I put in YouTube, I should be able to see it. And how is it that MBS finds this data set even though I only type YouTube? Well, because every volume, every disk, in this case, public 000, will have a catalog, which is kind of a directory entry. And if you go look for it, we'll find it. Uh, here it is. So this is the catalog for this disk. And the catalogs, they all relate to a master catalog. And if you set it up properly, which we're not going to go into here today, uh, then you can find things by the first name, by the first um, uh, high-level qualifier, or by the second high-level qualifier. Um, and um, and so that's how uh, that's how MBS keeps track of all data sets. They're cataloged. That is important in a second when we look how to get data in and out of MBS. For now, let me delete this data set. We don't need it. Um, deletion, okay, it's gone. So um, 
Having said this about all this about data sets, when the, and the distinction being that Windows and Linux uh, have have files that are just stream of bytes. The other great distinction is that obviously um, on on Linux and Windows we use ASCII. Um, so um, as an example, let's look at any kind of text. So this will be this text is is represented in ASCII. And if we upload it as it is into MVS, MVS will not be able to display this correctly because MVS uses an EPSIDIC, or I should say the uh, S370 architecture uses EPSIDIC as its uh, character encoding scheme. And they're not really very compatible. Um, some things are just not completely mappable from one to the other. And that's why you have things like code pages, which there's many different code pages so that from any ASCII you could try to map as correctly as possible into EPSIDIC on the mainframe. It's a whole different uh, topic and a very complex topic. But for most source files, you should be okay. Uh, the problem is when you have national character sets, such as, such as um, some of the character sets in Europe or even Asian, then it becomes really tricky. But for now, we'll avoid all that and we'll deal with very simple uh, files here. Now, let's it, let's look at what's possible. Uh, how do we get data in and out of MBS? So I, I can think of right now four different ways, I, I think it's four, uh, to get data in and out of MBS. Number one, maybe I should write this down uh, up here so that we don't we keep track of it. Number one is to use in uh, is, is to use int file, which is a way from a terminal emulator such as this one to get data into MVS and then out again um, through through the terminal file transfer um, uh, capability. The second that I can think of would be through tape, um, using either virtual or real tape. Number three would be through FTP. Yes, um, one of the things that I haven't mentioned much is that uh, Jürgen, uh, Jürgen Winkelmann, the author of TK4 and the maintainer of it, um, has actually added TCP capability to our M beloved MVS 3.8, something that was unthinkable just a few years ago. But yes, we have MVS uh, with TCP IP, and it can be used for a number of things, obviously. One of them is FTP. You could even send emails from inside MVS. So uh, don't think that this is uh, an old environment this is probably as new as can be and some new i'm also aware of some new capabilities coming with the next version of tk4 which is simply amazing so ftp is one to get in and out and then um i can also think of the xmit um uh, transmit uh, file um, capability of tso uh, for more structured data so there's probably more uh, but this four are the main ones um, obviously, another one, sorry, will be the card reader, where you just submit a deck of cards uh, through the card reader and with a job to, which copies it somewhere else. So these are probably the five most used ones. We're going to look into uh, one, two, and three today. Uh, maybe transmit. I don't want this video to be too long. And then maybe in one of the next videos, we'll do the card reader because that's a little bit more of a setup. Um, so that's what we're going to do today. Um, so number one, int file. Let's assume I have a file and we call it um, VI. Well, we can actually update this one file, which we just created. And we want to upload it to my data set. So first of all, um, where do we put it? Um, so Herc01. I want to put it in this one, um, Herc Tests Control. Okay, so the way to do this is very simple. Um, let's first find out what is the path here. This is the full path, and then I get I, I go up one level until I'm at the top level here. I press F3 again to get it to the TSO prompt, and now I go here and I say File Transfer, and it's really the same for almost any. Uh, terminal emulator that I have used. Um, I like on Windows. I like to use the Tom Brennan's Vista terminal, which I think is just amazing. Or you can uh, buy IBM's PCOM uh, 3270 emulator, which is just as good. 
and on Linux, obviously, you have X3270. So, uh, but they all have a file transfer functionality, which is really central to 3270 emulation. So, um, in this case, I know that the file I want is in, is in this directory, and I'm going to call it her, and I know it's going to go to, and, and in this case, the apostrophe here is very important. I don't know if you can see it in the video, but there's an apostrophe, herc01 test cntl, that was the name of the data set, and then I want to call it data, just the same as on my Linux laptop here. And then I choose send to host, and very important, transfer in ASCII mode. If I transfer in binary mode, uh, no good will come out of this, because this is a text file. So if you have text, you want to transfer it and receive it as ASCII. So everything else you don't have, need to deal with, I'm going to tell it I'm dealing with TSO, not Kix or VM, and transfer file. And that's it. It transferred already 15.5 kilobytes per second. That was very fast. Let's go back again into the main menu, TSO apples. Um, go, or oh, actually we could just do it like this, and go back in here, and here it is. That's exactly the data that we have up here. So that's one way to get it up. If we wanted to get it down, we would just try to understand where is it. You need to remember what is the, what is the, what's the data set you want to get um, and get out again. And then we do file transfer and we will do receive from host, again, ASCII. And that's it. Now, binary transfer, you would use more something that it's very rare. Um, very rare to keep a binary file of something that will run an MVS and keep it on my Linux system and then have to transfer. It can happen, but um, you probably first uh, work with something called transmit um, to avoid the translation problems that we mentioned before. So that's one way to do it. Um, now, another way, as we said here, is to use tape. Now, um, if I want to use tape, obviously, I need to have some way to launch a job that controls my tape devices. If I look here, my tape devices are down here. Dev live, dev list. So let's see where my tapes are. 3420. Um, ah, here it is. So 480 is my tape device, and that's in, that's what Hercules emulate, emulates here. So. I can't see it here because there's way more stuff, but I know the 480 is my tape device. I, oh, actually it is here. Device E is my tape device. So one way to get data into and out of MVS will be to use a tape. Um, so uh, for that to actually work, I need to have a job that reads and writes from the tape. And, and to do that, uh, we'll have to use actually a second way to get data in and out of, of MBS, which is going to be FTP. And it's a little convoluted, but trust me, I just need to get my job, my uh, JCL first into the system. The reason I need FTP is because I have the classic problem of getting um, a, a file into my MBS. What I want to have is a JCL job they will write some data to tape so that I could then import it on another MBS, right? Now, um, I could just choose to type the, the JCL to do that is this one. It's only about 12, 13 lines. Uh, and I could just go in here and, you know, and, and go in here and, and say, um, tape job and and I would have to type all of this um, or I could also copy and paste right but then I'll probably take this the uh, card uh, numbering along which I don't want and so how do I get this JCL into my MVS the easiest part the easiest uh, thing to do would be to get it in as, F as FTP um, so let's see how to use FTP. You remember that when you have your TK4 running with MBS inside, you can shift between the view of all the devices and the CPU state here um, by pressing escape. 
press escape, switch back and forth. And so you also remember that if I precede anything with a, with a slash, like so, that is a command that goes to the MVS console. And so MVS answers, this is MVS answering me. So I can use this console here to start FTP. And as FTP obviously is comes from a Unix tradition and daemons are uh, typically called uh, the name of the app or the, the, the program with a D at the end for daemon. And the same here. So we can start with start FTP D, which is FTP daemon, comma server port equals 21, 2100. So um, please make sure to read exactly the, uh, the syntax here. Start, which I could abbreviate to just S if I wanted for, you know, an MVS S means start. FTPD, there's a procedure for that in the sys1 proclib or sys2 proclib probably. Coma, serve port, server port equals 2100. In my case, or you could put in something else, but I put in 2100. And that is the port you will be connecting to later on. Okay. Let me get out of this data set. There's no, so there's no locking issues. Now, um, so as you can see, FTP started. Would be nice if FTPD would actually print the serve port again, just, you know, to be, just to make it clear. Maybe I'll make that change to the uh, program and send it to Jurgen one of these days. And so how do I get now my JCL to write to job to tape uh, from my Linux system here into MBS? So I do, I first I get into the directory where I have my stuff and then I do like this FTP localhost 2100 because I started it with 2100, right? I log in with my uh, user ID and password. And then I go over to herc01 test cntl. If I do a list, I should see data because that's the uh, that's the, that's the uh, that's the member that we had uploaded before using the file transfer capability of the terminal. So now I can just say ASCII because I want this to be transferred as ASCII. Very important here. If you don't put ASCII and goes in as binary, junk will come out. We can actually try that and put from. Okay. And so let's go look what came out already here. Uh, this is just binary garbled output. So that's the reason why we have to use ASCII because her, the the S370 architecture uses EPSIDIC and my Linux system uses ASCII, so they're not compatible. Um, so let me delete this. Okay, it's gone. And I'll just do it again. Now, first I set um, ASCII and then Okay, and here it is. If I go back, oops. Yep, here it is. And so I didn't have to retype the whole job here. And, and this is now the part where we deal with tape. So let's close this. By the way, you always want to stop the FT You can also, of course, uh, use FTP to get stuff out from your MBS system uh, or put in multiple things. So for instance, um, let's uh, put in a bigger collection of data. I go to um, I have here a lot of assembler jobs nothing special here just some assembler um, and I want to put all of those so then again FTP localhost 2100 this time I'm going to put it into my assembler data, partition data set ASCII prompt off so it doesn't 
conf ask me for confirmation each time. So interactive mode off, off and then input uh, asterisk, and that's it. And you will see here that it's actually not using much uh, CPU at all. This is a remarkably well written. If I did this on a real, uh, on a modern ZOS system, uh, CPU usage would be probably 20, 30 times higher. So this is how good this uh, little piece of software is written by one of the community members. That's it, done. Uh, we could go in now here and see what's going on here. Yep, they're all here. Obviously, all the statistics about each member are not initialized yet because it was just uploaded. Uh, but if I look at it and save it, um, I will start to see some statistics here. Um, so now that we have the JCL to use to use tape, let's do that before we finish this video today. Um, remember that we have a tape here at 480. And now before we can use a tape, what we have to do is we have to initialize a, tap, a tape. And there's a little utility uh, which comes when you install Hercules called head init uh, for uh, Hercules, I don't even remember anymore what HET, extended tape, Hercules extended tape, something like that. Um, don't really remember, sorry about this, but you use head init minus D for a compressed tape, and then we call it Herc2 AWS, and then the volume name. That's very important, so we call it Herc2. And now we have this tape here. And that's the tape we're going to use to write to. If I look at the tape size right now, it's going to be um, just one byte. Um, so let's see what happens if we launch a job. Let's look at the JCL here. I call it Herc01 T for tape. And then copy to tape. And what I do is I have IEB copy, which is one of the supplied uh, program by IBM, one of the standard supply program by IBM. Um, let's make it 750 kilobytes of region, should be enough. Um, and then sysprintout goes to H, which is fine. Um, and then I have a couple of data set definitions. Sysprint obviously is one, then tape is um, the one where I write to tape, so unit equals tape. This position new. How I want to call the data set on the tape. I'm going to call it the macro library, which is the standard micro library supplied by MVS. It's quite a large data set so that we can actually see it do something. And then I'm going to give it volume serial 2, very important, standard label. And PDSDD is what I'm trying to copy to tape. Again, this is sys1 maclib. I called it the same here and here. doesn't have to, but uh, obviously avoids confusion. And then there is um, one of the temporary work data sets that IEB copy uses, um, which is going to be deleted when this job ends. And then the sys in car to IEB copy. Here we tell IEB copy, copy. The in data set is called PDS, and the out data set is going to be called tape. Very simple. It should, I don't see any problems with this. It should run out of the box. And so what's going to happen is that we launch the job. The console will tell me, hey, a uh, job wants to write to a tape, put in a tape. And that would be the physically, physically, that would be the same thing as taking a tape reel, going to the tape unit, uh, opening up the glass window and inserting it, and then pushing the button attention, which will send the attention interrupt to MVS that it's loaded. And then MVS will read the label to make sure that the label is the same as we're saying. And if, and if so, it will start writing to it. So why don't we submit this job and see what happens? Okay. Here, uh, it's on the console. Uh, job number 10. Yes, checks out. And it's telling me uh, the job started and it wants a tape. This is the way that MVS tells the tape operator or what? you know, all the operators in the in the data center uh, that it needs a tape. Uh, this is the attention mark. And so it says mount on unit 480, which is this one, 
on the tape and so the way we're going to do it is we're going to tell it dev init device init 480 and how do we call it herc2 aws and and the job is still waiting here nothing is happening right others other jobs could be running but our jobs will be waiting so dev init 480 herc2 ws and the moment we press enter that sends an interrupt to mvs that the to start processing as I just described before. Label error. Okay, so there's a label error and that's why uh, it, MBS is not letting the job continue. Oh, here's the, I see the label error. So let's reply on low, let's do this right. It's asking us if we want to use this label and overwrite it or if we want to unload it. The error is it should say ERC2, but I put in ERC02. So um, well, let's first unload this. M for unload. And now it's asking us again to load the tape with the label ERC02. And the, la the, 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 the tape we've made before had the wrong label. So let's do one with the right label and let's call it correct okay so we now have this tape and we can remove the previous one just to avoid confusion okay and the job is still waiting right so now we tell it uh, dev init and this is not a command to MVS that's a command to Hercules because the tape will be a physical thing we put into the tape drive and that's what we're doing now talking to Hercules not to MVS 480 for the tape device and we use this and press enter and now the job should execute yep and that's it the job finished it wrote the tape and now let's see how big this tape is this time it's become quite a bit bigger it's now 11 megabytes okay all of the sys1 maclib which is a, a very big um, partition data set Let's look at it here. So um, it uses a thousand tracks. Um, so go in here and you see how big this data set is. And, and that's it. So now we have a tape. We could take this tape, go to another computer, and load it back with the reverse um, JCL. So if we go here. We could just say copy in the, the tape out the, the PDS. Uh, make sure obviously that the PDS is previously allocated or write this position new and allocated uh, with the amount of space that you need. So that's, uh, that's how we get um, data in and out of MBS. Uh, to recap, we can do several things. We looked at how to use the terminal emulator uh, transfer for ASCII or, or, or binary. We saw how to do FTP and we do saw how to use tape. In one of the next videos, we'll do the card reader and the transmit uh, file. Transmit files are really just used when you install software like binary. I'm not really sure how useful that's going to be for you guys. Or, but if you want to, please let me know. Uh, card reader is definitely uh, another comfortable way, comfortable way to get data into MVS. And so that's it for today. Um, uh, thank you very much for watching and thank you for all your comments. For any questions, please type any of the comments you want below this video. And please uh, don't forget to uh, press on like if you like this video. Thank you very much and have a great day. Bye.